Ray, in reflecting on human purpose and existence, the question, are we alone or is the universe filled with other intelligent beings of which we are just a, a very minor part, is a fundamental one to understand what it's all about. Most scientists would say, based on the numbers, that it is virtually certain that there are other vastly more intelligent civilizations in the universe. You approach this from a technology point of view. Let's, let's explore it. Well, we can't rule out that they may be out there, but most other scientists actually look at this from a linear perspective and assume that other civilizations are out there and it would take millions of years to get from where we are now to a point where they might, for example, have solar system or, or even galaxy-wide technology. Uh, based on the exponential progression of technology, which is really the correct way to look at it, that's the historically accurate view, we've gone in just a century and a half from the Pony Express to where we are now, which is very impressive, and you go out another century and a half, uh, we will be saturating the matter and energy, at least here on Earth, with computational processes that will be trillions of trillions of times more powerful than all of human intelligence today. So that's three centuries to go from the Pony Express to very transcendent technology that will at least dominate our planet. And, and in fact, I'd say within a century or so from now, we'll dominate our solar system. And if, if the SETI assumptions are correct, there should be millions of these civilizations out there. Okay, someone would be behind us, someone would be ahead of us, but the ones that are ahead of us, which should be about half of them, would, aren't going to be just 20 years ahead. They're going to be millions of years ahead. Well, it's only a few centuries ahead. They would be taking over their solar system and within, uh, certainly within a million years, they would be, uh, really taking over their galaxies and would be not only doing galaxy wide engineering, but would be transforming their galaxies into beacons of incredibly uh, transcendent uh, technology and intelligence. And there should be millions of them that are millions of years ahead of us. And we don't notice any of them. We don't notice anything going on. And people describe this process as finding a needle in a haystack, but a civilization like that would be putting out trillions of trillions of needles, which is to say intelligent signals. And now people have arguments why we don't see them. Well, they, they all blew themselves up. Well, it's possible that uh, if you talk about one civilization, that it blew itself up. But to talk, there should be millions of them. Or they don't want to visit us because we're uh, too primitive and they want to let us develop yeah, that's the, the Star, Star Trek. Trek. Uh, Another I one is that they've gotten into virtual reality, so they really don't care about visiting or doing anything, everything they live in themselves. Well, they don't use radio signals anymore, but... It may be that they find better ways of communicating, but it's still hard to believe that they wouldn't be using electromagnetic signals, at least as a byproduct of, of second order effects. Mm. I mean, there's bound to be intelligent electromagnetic signals coming from such a civilization at a vast scale. And, and we would notice this. Uh, and you can make an argument as to why any one civilization wouldn't be noticeable, but the whole city assumption is there should be millions of them based on the Drake formula. Maybe even millions in our galaxy alone, and then our right. galaxy is 100 billion galaxies. So there should be a vast number, and we don't notice anything along these lines. The interesting thing is that big numbers are what drive these assumptions, the big numbers of, of, of numbers of planets around stars and stars in the galaxy and galaxies in the universe. And so you, you run that out. What you've done is you've shown that the, the exponential increase of technology would enable every one of those, if they were technology civilizations, to within million years dominate the universe in, in, in some way, again, recognizing the speed of light as an issue. It, it depends on the speed of light. Certainly within a million years, they, they would dominate and transform their Galaxy. galaxies. And, and, and that would be very noticeable. Uh, no matter what galaxy it was, if it was in within our light sphere, we have trillions of galaxies within our light sphere. Uh, the the exponential part is is the key process because once a civilization just reaches the dawn of being radio capable, and we're a little bit past that already, within a century, if not two or three, they will be vastly 
you know, trillions and trillions yeah, of times. I, I can even argue, suppose Ray Kurzweil doesn't know what he's talking about and he's off by a whole order of magnitude. So it's 10 times more difficult than you say. So it's a thousand years instead of a hundred yeah. years. That's, that's, a, that's, a, a, that's an eye drop in the ocean of time. Right, but if you don't examine the issue exponentially, if you examine it linearly, you do get a very different perspective. Uh, and then the fact that there are millions or billions of these civilizations out there it takes a very long period of time for them to do anything that's interesting. But that's really not a reasonable assumption if you look at you know, the history of, of technology and where it is likely to go. So what's your conclusion? My conclu conclusion is we're probably alone. I really would be surprised if we ran into somebody else out there. Uh, it's not a proof because, you know, there sure. may be one other civilization uh, that's ahead of us, that happens to be ahead of us, and maybe they have taken the Star Trek ethical uh, command to, to, you know, not be noticeable to us, and, or maybe we just haven't noticed their signals yet. So I, it's not a rock solid proof that sure. there cannot be another civilization. But my expectation is that we are alone, if that seems very unlikely, lots of things are unlikely, the existence of our whole universe uh, being so exquisitely calibrated to have the, all the physical constants to allow for the evolution of complexity is also extremely unlikely. By the anthropic principle, if it weren't the case, we wouldn't be here talking about it. Well, if it weren't the case that we were here on a intelligent civilization, we wouldn't be here talking about it. And if we didn't have some radio technology, this program wouldn't reach <laughs> <laughs> Your viewers. If we are indeed alone, would seem to contradict the Copernican principle, which means that humanity is nothing special and would go against a lot of scientific thinking that has uh, informed our, our philosophy. Well, even if we just look here on Earth, there is something special about humans. Yes, we're not at the center of the universe. And yes, we didn't descend from the gods, we descended from the worms. <laughs> But we're the only species that creates knowledge, that passes knowledge down to the next generation, where the knowledge base expands, that creates technology. We have this opposable appendage and this ability to do recursive rational thinking and can do what-if experiments in our brain and can change the environment. And they can use the latest generation of tools to create the next. So we have this whole evolutionary process of technology. No other species does that. So even, even here on Earth, we are very special in that regard, even though we came from this evolutionary process, we did finally gather the, those prerequisites to create this whole other evolutionary process, which is technology. That makes maybe us special here on Earth or among ourselves, but to say we're special in the universe would almost uh, imbue it with some uh, uh, theological implications. Well, if you assume that sooner or later this would happen, and that is the steady assumption that there'd be some civilization that would evolve some kind of ability to manipulate the environment and an ability to think well enough to actually create technology and then have technology evolve. You assume that that will happen sooner or later. Somebody's got to be in the lead, and why not us?